Hello there, it's Sandy Almock, and today I want to share with you how I made this beautiful decorated cigar box with alcohol inks. I have had this box for a very long time. I bought it ages ago. And you can get these at all different kinds of places. You can get them at craft stores. I know that there are a number of them that carry these. You can get them at vintage shops and other places. But this one is old. You can tell there's just dust all over it. Needs some work, but I finally, about six months ago, decided that I would start working on it. And what I did was start to put watercolor grounds on it. My Daniel Smith watercolor grounds. I was going to paint it in watercolor. And I just never came up with ideas. I just had no thought about what I was going to put on it, just that I wanted to do something on it. And over time, every once in a while when I had some time, I put another layer of the watercolor grounds on it and another one. Kept thinking maybe at some point this would start to come together and I'd have an idea on what to do. And it never quite did. I was thinking about doing some pen and ink work on it, but then... I started realizing the surface was never going to work for pen and ink because it's just too lumpy. And then I thought, well, let me sand it. How about that? And I got it nice and sanded and I was ready to do pen and ink on it. And that seemed okay until I realized, no, I don't want to do that at all. I found a video on YouTube about putting something on the surface that will make it so I can use alcohol ink on the box. And that got me excited because I've been playing with alcohol ink a lot lately. And I thought it would make a beautiful design on this box. The stuff is called Kills 2, K-I-L-L-Z 2. And I'll have a link to it in the description, but I would not recommend buying it online. It's a gallon and it's paint. It's like a primer enamel fix types of th type of thing of some sort. And I would not ship that. I just don't think that that's safe to ship. So you can get it online and I'll, I'll link to it just so you can see what it is. But it comes in a giant gallon. I got mine at the local hardware store. Same price as I found it online. So just pick one up there. And I painted a couple coats of that and sanded between those so I could get a nice smooth surface. And thank you to YouTube for having that suggestion. They were painting it on other things, but I tried it on this box and it worked great. And the colors that I'm using are from Ranger, and I just am using 99% alcohol with it to liquefy the color a little bit more. And I'm using a pipette to get it out of a glass jar. I see people put the alcohol into a little squeeze bottle, but I get more control with the pipette. And I also get more control in moving the color by using an airbrush. I know a lot of folks will use things like the the ranger's blower tool and a straw and all kinds of stuff but i don't find that i get these long fluid movements the way that i do with an airbrush you can also get a um, in in addition to this copic airbrush system which has the copic gun which is you know like 30 40 50 dollars i don't even remember what it is you can get that if you're going to also do copic airbrush and then you can use it for this as well. And you need a cord to link to the compressor and then you need the compressor. And the compressor is the big expense. They're like $150 online, but you can get them at a store near you for probably 50 bucks. And ask to see if your spouse or your neighbor or anybody that you know has a compressor because a lot of people will have that in a toolkit or you know out in their garage and stuff. So maybe you can borrow one to try it with. But there's also a little crafty one. I, I say crafty because it's meant to do either painting nails or painting cookies. And it's got a lot less pressure to it, but you can still use it to move color around. I'll have a link to that one in the description as well. But I also have a whole other video all about alternate supplies for blowing things. So if you're interested in more of that, then the link will be in the doobly-doo. However... I want to put out a major, major, major caution about this in the first place. One is the caution is that you're going to get addicted to this. So be prepared. You're, everything's going to get alcohol ink on it because you're going to be alcohol inking everything you own. Because you can do this on metal. You can do it on plastic. You can do it on apparently a cigar box. So 
now I have a gallon of this Kills 2 stuff. I'm going to be looking for other things I can paint. I have a rocking chair that needs some work, and maybe I'm going to alcohol ink a rocking chair. I don't know. However, okay, back to the warnings. The other warning is do this in a ventilated room. You can actually really hurt your lungs. You could burn your eyes like you could just have too much chemical stuff going on. And there are people who are really sensitive to that. And I don't want you to find out the hard way that it's going to make you pass out or anything. And also, if you're going to use anything for blowing like a straw, you really, really, really want to be careful. For one, you don't want to use the Ranger solution that they have, that they sell, because the Ranger solution is going to damage your lungs if you inhale it. So do not do that. Don't ever put it in a mister. No way that's going to be able to be ingested into you by accident. So that's why I use the 99% alcohol. You can also use the 91%. I've gotten the 91% at Target in the section for all medications and makeups and all that kind of stuff. It's in that area. And I've also gotten the 99% on Amazon because I was trying to see if there was a difference between the 99 and the 91. Again, see my other video all about supplies for more information on that. And the pipettes you can get very easily at craft places will sell them. And they're also, you know, all over the interwebs, etc. Links to all the supplies that I'm using are down below and that sort of stuff. I'm just layering dollops of color and dollops of the alcohol and forming them into little flowers by moving the color and the alcohol around using the airflow. And the thing I love about the Copic airbrush or any airbrush is that I can actually make the air go where I want it to. I can work things back and forth, pushing color and creating a shape that dries. And then as soon as it dries, I know I can drop more of the alcohol in and get some other things to move in particular ways. So I will be having a class on using alcohol inks in the near future. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. But this was just a crazy wild fun project to do. And I hope you'll consider doing crazy wild things like this. But I'm about to show you where I've ruined this project, or some will say I've ruined it. I liked how it came out, but it has this sort of glossy feel to the outside of it. In any of the areas where a lot of the ink collects, it gets sort of super shiny. And I thought, oh, I'll just do some epoxy spray on it. That'll be good. I'll just go get some spray varnish or something. And I did. I got some spray varnish. I took it outside, got some newspaper, and thought, well, I'm just going to spray this puppy. It'll be great. And I sprayed it and it came out looking like I was spraying something white, but I thought, oh, it's going to dry clear, I'm sure. Because it said that it was varnish and it's actually white varnish. <laughs> so I now have a pastel alcohol ink box. How crazy is that? <laughs> I kind of liked it when it was all said and done, even though it felt kind of disappointing. So make sure you get one that's clear and not white. I mean, the lid on this thing was white, but I didn't realize it was actually white spray. So there you go. I just did a light coat of it, a uh, heavier coat on the top apparently, because that's the part that went more pastel. But I still think it's beautiful. And it's not tacky at all on the outside of it. So I, I achieved that much at the very least. And the colors are still really pretty. I mean, it just, it looks like it's frosted glass over it now, as opposed to having so much bright color. And it actually goes better in my studio because I don't have anything that's like that intense kind of colors. I have more subtle colors like this. I have no idea what I'm going to put in it. If you have ideas, let me know. But look at these gorgeous feet. These are from Ranger. But again, I bought these years ago. I don't even know if they're available anymore. But tell me in the comments, did I ruin it? Did I? I hope not. I think it's still pretty. And yeah, you know, you make lemonade out of lemons. You buy the wrong paint and you get what you get. But thanks so much for staying tuned for this video. More links in the description. I'll see you later.